Good morning all students. Welcome to the new lecture of power generation techniques. I am Poonam Diwan, assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Vishwavidyalaya Engineering College, Ambikapur. The topic of today's lecture is energy conservation opportunities. Energy conservation opportunities in boiler systems are essential for reducing energy consumption and operating cost while minimizing environmental impacts. So, let us start. As we all know that boiler is an enclosed vessel that provides a means for combustion heat to be transferred into water until it becomes heated water or steam. The hot water or steam under pressure is then usable for transferring the heat to a process. Heat is transferred from one body to another by means of radiation, convection and conduction. The boiler co system comprises of feed water system, steam system and fuel system. In feed water system, it provides water to the boiler and regulates it automatically to meet the steam demand. Various walls provide access for maintenance and repair. In a steam system, it collects and controls the steam produced in the boiler. Steam is directed through a piping system to the point of use, where as in fuel system, it includes all equipments used to provide fuel to generate the necessary heat. The equipment required in the fuel system depends on the type of fuel used in the system. The two sources of feed water are condensate or condensed steam returned from the processes and makeup water that is treated raw water which must come from outside the boiler room and plant processes. Now we see the types of boilers which are fire tube boiler. A fire tube boiler is defined as a boiler that consists of a sealed container filled with water and a series of tubes that run through it. The tubes carry hot gases from fire, usually fueled by coal, air or gas that heat the water and generate steam. The pressure and temperature of the steam depend on the size and design of the boiler as well as the quality and quantity of the fuel. Generally, fire tube boiler can produce low to medium pressure steam up to 17.5 bar and low to medium capacity up to 9 metric tons per hour, which means it has small steam capacity 12,000 kg per hour, produces low to medium steam pressure 18 kg per centimeter square. It operates with oil, gas or solid fuels. Second, water tube boiler. A water tube boiler is such kind of boiler where the water is heated inside tubes and the hot gases surround them. This is the basic definition of water tube boiler. Actually, this boiler is just opposite of the fire tube boiler, where hot gases are passed through the tubes which are surrounded by water. It is used for high steam demand and pressure requirement. Its capacity ranges from 4500 to 120,000 kg per hour. Its combustion efficiency enhanced by induced draft provisions. It has lower tolerance for water quality and need water treatment plant. Packaged boiler. The packaged boiler is so called because it comes as a complete package. Once delivered to a site, it requires only the steam, water pipe work, fuel supply and electrical connections to be made to become operational. Package boiler are generally of a shell type with a fire tube design so as to achieve high heat transfer rates by both radiation and convection. Package boilers are used for heating and act as a steam generator for small power purposes such as self-powered industrial plants. They cannot be used for large scale power plants such as cogeneration plants due to their size and lack of efficiency. The advantages of package boilers are 
they can be brought in as a whole assembly perfect for tight spaces and easily installed they require steam pipes water pipes fuel supply electrical connections and can be made ready almost immediately because of their compact design these boilers are cheaper to operate due to their automatic burner management system as well as maintenance cost the main feature of pack packaged boiler are it has high heat transfer rate faster evaporation good convective heat transfer good combustion efficiency high thermal efficiency fluidized bed combustion boiler fluidized bed combustion has emerged as a viable alternative and has significant advantages over conventional firing system it offers multiple benefits like compact boiler design fuel flexibility higher combustion efficiency and reduced emission of noxious pollutants such as sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides the fuels burned in these boilers include coal washery rejects rice husk bagasses and other agricultural waste the fluidized bed boilers have a wide capacity range 0.5 tons per hour to over 100 tons per hour mainly combustion occurs at 840 to 950 degrees celsius its advantages are compact fullness fuel flexibility higher combustion efficiency and reduce sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides stoker fired boilers the first type of stoker fired boiler is a spreader stoker in this type of boiler coal is first burned in suspension then in the coal bed flexibility is there to meet fluctuation it favored in many industrial application it uses in both suspension and grade burning the second one is chain grade or traveling grade stoker here coal is burned in moving steel grade coal gate controls coal feeding rate it gives uniform coal size for complete combustion pulverized fuel boiler in pulverized fuel boiler pulverized coal powder blown with combustion air into boiler through burner nozzles its combustion temperature is 1300 to 1700 degrees celsius pulverized fuel boilers are commonly used in large power plants due to their high efficiency and the ability to generate large quantities of steam or electricity however the environmental impact and regulatory requirements associated with emissions control have led to the development of cleaner and more efficient combustion technologies such as fluidized bed combustion and integrated gasification combined cycle igcc systems which are becoming increasingly important in modern energy generation waste heat boiler a waste heat boiler is a type of boiler that captures and utilizes excess heat generated from various industrial processes it is designed to recover heat that would otherwise be wasted and convert it into useful system or hot water for heating or power generation waste heat boilers are commonly used in industries where high temperature processes produce excess heat such as refineries chemical plants steel mills and power plants waste heat boilers play a vital role in improving energy efficiency and reducing energy cost in many industrial applications they are a sustainable solution that helps industries make better use of their resources while minimizing environmental impact proper design operation and maintenance are essential to maximize the benefits of waste heat recovery system now we see the assessment of boilers the assessment of a boiler is a critical process that involves evaluating its condition performance safety and compliance with regulations regular assessments are essential to ensure the efficient and safe operation of the boiler system here are some key steps and consideration in assessing a boiler number 1 visual inspection begin with the visual inspection of the entire boiler system including the boiler itself 
associated equipment and safety devices. Look for signs of damage, corrosion, leaks and worn out components. Check for proper labeling and identification of critical components. Second, safety devices and controls. Inspect safety devices such as pressure relief walls, water level controls and flame safeguard systems. Ensure that all safety devices are in good working condition and have not been tampered with. Third, boiler documentation. Review the boiler's documentation including its design specifications, operating manuals and maintenance records. Verify that the boiler has been properly maintained and serviced according to the manufacturer recommendations. Fourth, pressure and temperature checks. Measure and record the boiler's operating pressure and temperature. Compare these readings to the recommended operating parameters to ensure they are within acceptable limits. Fifth, boiler efficiency assessment. Calculate or measure the boiler efficiency. This involves evaluating its fuel consumption and heat output to determine how efficiently it converts fuel into useful energy. Compare the measured efficiency to the boiler's design efficiency or industry standards. Sixth, emissions testing. If applicable, conduct emissions testing to measure pollutants such as carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides and particulate matter. Ensure compliance with environmental regulations and emission limits. Seven, combustion analysis. Perform a combustion analysis to access the efficiency of the combustion process. This may involve checking the air to fuel ratio and adjusting it for optimal combustion. Monitor and adjust the burner settings for proper flame characteristics. Eighth, water treatment and water quality. Access the quality of the boiler feed water and the effectiveness of the water treatment program. Check for signs of scaling, corrosion or excessive deposits within the boiler and associated components. Ninth, boiler structure and insulation. Inspect the boiler structural integrity and insulation. Look for signs of deterioration, corrosion or damage to the boiler shell and insulation material. Tenth, safety training and procedures. Ensure that Boiler operators and maintenance personnel are adequately trained in safe boiler operation and emergency procedures. Review safety protocols and emergency shutdown procedures. 11th, regulatory compliance. Verify that the boiler complies with all local, state and federal regulations, in, including safety codes and emissions standards. Address any non-compliance issue promptly. Twelfth, recommendation and remediation. Based on the assessment findings, generate a list of recommendations for maintenance, repairs or upgrades. Prioritize and implement necessary re remediation measures to address safety and performance issues. Regular boiler assessments are crucial for maintaining safe and efficient boiler operation, extending the boiler's lifespan and ensuring compliance with regulatory requirement. Any identified issues should be addressed promptly to prevent accidents, reduce energy waste and minimize downtime. Now the next topic is energy efficiency opportunities in boilers. The various energy efficiency opportunities in boiler systems can be related to combustion, heat transfer, avoidable losses, high auxiliary power consumption, water quality and blowdown. The following factors can indicate if a boiler is being run to maximize its efficiency. Number 1. Stack temperature. The stack temperature should be as low as possible, however, it should not be so low that water vapor in the exhaust condenses on the stack walls. This is important in fuels containing significant sulfur as low temperature can lead to sulfur dew point corrosion. Stack temperatures greater than 200 degrees Celsius 
indicates potential for recovery of waste heat. It also indicates the scaling of heat transfer per recovery equipment and hence the urgency of taking an early shutdown for water per flue site cleaning. Second, feed water preheating using economizer. Typically, the flue gases leaving a modern three pass shell boiler are at a temperature of 200 to 300 degrees Celsius. Thus, there is a potential to recover heat from these gases. The flue gas exit temperature from a boiler is usually maintained at a minimum of 200 degrees Celsius so that the sulfur oxides in the flue gas do not condense and cause corrosion in heat transfer surfaces. When a clean fuel such as natural gas, LPG or gas oil is used, the economy of heat recovery must be worked out as the flue gas temperature may be well below 200 degrees Celsius. The potential for energy saving depends on the type of boiler installed and the fuel used for a typical, typically older model shell boiler with a flue gas exit temperature of 260 degrees Celsius An economizer could be used to reduce it to 200 degrees Celsius. Increasing the feed water temperature by 15 degrees Celsius. Increase in overall thermal efficiency would be in the order of 3 percent. For a modern three pass shell boiler, firing natural gas with a flow flue gas exit temperature of 140 degrees Celsius, a condensing economizer would reduce to exit. Third, combustion air preheat. Combustion air preheating is an alternative to feed water heating. In order to improve thermal efficiency by 1 percent, the combustion air temperature must be raised by 20 degrees Celsius. Most gas and oil burners used in the boiler plant are not designed for high air preheat temperatures. Modern burners can withstand much higher combustion air preheat, so it is possible to consider such units as heat exchangers in the exit flue as an alternative to an economizer. When either space or a high feed water return temperature make it viable. Fourth, incomplete combustion. Incomplete combustion can arise from a shortage of air or surplus of fuel or poor distribution of fuel. It is usually obvious from the color or smoke and must be corrected immediately. In the case of oil and gas fired systems, CO or smoke with normal or high excess air indicates burner system problems. A more frequent cause of incomplete combustion is the poor mixing of fuel and air at the burner. Poor oil fires can result from improper viscosity, worn tips, carbonization on tips and deterioration of diffusers or spinner plates. With coal firing, unburnt carbon can comprise a big loss. It occurs as grit, carryover or carbon in ash and may amount to more than 2 percent of the heat supplied to the boiler. Non-uniform fuel size could be one of the reasons for incomplete combustion. In chain grate stokers, large lumps will not burn out completely, while small pieces and fines may block the air passage, thus causing poor air distribution. In sprinkler stalkers, stalker grade condition, fuel distributors, wind blow, wind box, air regulation and over fire systems can affect carbon loss. Increase in the fines in pulverized coal also increases carbon losses. Fifth, excess air control. Excess air is required in the all practical cases to ensure complete combustion, to allow for the normal variations in combustion and to ensure satisfactory stack conditions for some fuels. The optimum excess air level for maximum boiler efficiency occurs when the sum of the losses due to incomplete combustion and loss due to heat in flue gases is minimum. 
This level varies with furnace design, type of burner, fuel and process variables. It can be determined by conducting tests with different air fuel ratio. Controlling excess air to an optimum level always result in reduction in flue gas losses. For every 1% reduction in excess air, there is approximately 0.6% rise in efficiency. Various methods are available to control the excess air. Potable oxygen analyzers and draft gauges can be used to make periodic readings to guide the operator to manually adjust the flow of air for optimum op operation. Excess air reduction up to 20% is feasible. The most common method is the continuous oxygen analyzer with a local readout mounted graft gauge by which the operator can adjust air flow. The, a further reduction of 10 to 15% can be achieved over the previous system. The same continuous oxygen analyzer can have a remote controlled pneumatic damper positioner by which the readouts are available in a control room. This enables an operator to remotely control a number of firing systems simultaneously. The most sophisticated system is the automatic stack damper control whose cost is really justified only for large systems. Sixth, radiation and convection heat loss. The external surfaces of a shell boiler are hotter than the surroundings. The surfaces thus loss heat to the surroundings depending on the surface area and the difference in temperature between the surface and surroundings. The heat loss from the boiler shell is normally a fixed energy loss irrespective of the boiler output. With modern boiler designs, this may represent only 1.5% on the gross calorific value at full rating but will increase to around 6% if the boiler operates at only 25% output. Repairing or augmenting insulation can reduce heat loss through boiler walls and piping. Seventh, automatic blowdown control. Uncontrolled continuous blowdown is very wasteful. Automatic blowdown controls can be installed that sense and respond to boiler water, conductivity and pH. A 10% blowdown in a 15 kg per centimeter square boiler results in 3% efficiency loss. Eighth, reduction of scaling and soot losses. In oil and coal fired boilers, soot build up on tubes acts as an insulator against heat transfer. Any such deposit should be removed on a regular basis. Elevated stack temperatures may indicate excessive soot buildup. Also, same result will occur due to scaling on the water side. High exit gas temperatures at normal excess air indicate poor, health, poor heat transfer performance. This condition can result from a gra gradual buildup of gas side or water side deposits. Water side deposit requires a review of water treatment procedure tube cleaning to remove deposits. An estimated 1% efficiency loss occurs with every 22 degrees Celsius increase in stack temperature. Stack temperature should be checked and recorded regularly as an indicator of soot deposits. When the flue gas temperature rises above 20 degrees Celsius above the temperature of a newly cleaned boiler, it is time to remove the soot deposits. It is therefore recommended to install a dial type thermometer at the base of the stack to monitor the exhaust flue gas temperature. It is estimated that 3 mm of soot can cause an increase in fuel consumption by 2.5 percent due to increased flue gases temperatures. Periodic offline cleaning of radiant furnace surfaces, boiler tube banks, economizers and air heaters may be necessary to remove stubborn deposits. Ninth, reduction of boiler steam pressure. This is an effective means of reducing fuel consumption if permissible by as much as 1 to 2 percent lower steam pressure gives a lower saturated steam temperature and without stack heat recovery a similar reduction in the temperature of the flue gas temperature results. Steam is generated at pressures normally di dictated by the highest pressure temperature requirements for a particular process. 
in some cases the process does not operate all the time and there are periods when the boiler pressure could be reduced the energy manager should consider pressure reduction carefully before recommending it adverse effects such as an increase in water carry over from the boiler owing to pressure reduction may negate any potential saving pressure should be reduced in stages and not more than a 20% reduction should be considered 10th variable speed control for fans blowers and pumps variable speed control is an important means of achieving energy savings generally combustion air control is affected by throttling dampers fitted at post and induced draft fans though dampers are simple means of control they lack accuracy giving poor control characteristics at the top and bottom of the operating range in general if the load characteristic of the boiler is variable the possibility of replacing the damper by a vsd should be evaluated 11th effect of boiler loading on efficiency the maximum efficiency of the boiler does not occur at full load but at about 2/3 of the full load if the load on the boiler decreases further efficiency also tends to decrease at zero output the efficiency of the boiler is zero and any fuel fired is used only to supply the losses the factors affecting boiler efficiency are as the load falls so does the value of the mass flow rate of the flue gases through the tubes this reduction in flow rate for the same heat transfer area reduce the exit flue gas temperatures by a small extent reducing the sensible heat loss below half load most combustion appliances need more excess air to burn the fuel completely this increases the sensible heat loss in general efficiency of the boiler reduces significantly below 25% of the rated load and as far as possible operation of boiler below this level should be avoided 12th proper boiler scheduling since the optimum efficiency of boilers occurs at 65 to 85% of full load it is usually more efficient on the whole to operate a fewer number of boilers at higher loads than to operate a large number at low loads 13th boiler replacement the potential savings from replacing a boiler depend on the anticipated change in overall efficiency a change in the boiler can be financially attractive if the existing boiler is old and inefficient not capable of firing cheaper substitution fuel over or undersized for pressure requirements not designed for ideal loading conditions the feasibility study should examine all implications of long term fuel availability and company growth plans all financial and engineering factors should be considered since boiler plants traditionally have a useful life of well over 25 years replacement must be carefully studied let us discuss some more points energy conservation opportunities in boiler systems are essential for reducing energy consumption and operating cost while minimizing environmental impacts here are some key points to conserve energy in boiler system first boiler efficiency improvement regular maintenance and cleaning of boilers to remove scale and soot build up upgrade to more efficient burners and combustion controls insulate the boiler and steam distribution system to minimize heat losses second optimize boiler operation implement a proper control strategy to match the boiler output with the actual demand this can involve installing modulating burners and controls implement a regular tuning and optimization program for combustion process to ensure the boiler operates at peak efficiency third install heat recovery systems utilize heat recovery systems like 
condensing economizer or exhaust gas heat exchangers to capture and reuse waste heat from flue gases for various applications such as space heating or preheating water. Fourth, implement CHP system. CHP system generate electricity and capture waste heat for heating or cooling greatly improving overall energy efficiency. Fifth, steam system optimization. Reduce steam pressure to the lowest acceptable level to minimize energy losses during distribution. Optimize steam traps and repair or replace faulty ones to prevent steam leakage. Implement steam header and condensate return system improvements. Sixth, fuel switching. Consider switching to cleaner and more efficient fuels when feasible. Evaluate the feasibility of alternative energy sources like biomass, solar or geothermal for supplementing or replacing the boiler system. Seventh, regular monitoring and energy management. Implement an energy management system that tracks and analyzes boiler performance data in real time. Use data analytics and monitoring tools to identify inefficiencies and operational improvements. Eight, Boiler sizing and load matching. Ensure that the boiler capacity matches the actual load requirements. Oversized boilers tend to operate less efficiently at partial loads. Ninth, employee training. Train personnel to operate and maintain the boiler system efficiently. Encourage employees to report and address energy waste and leaks promptly. Tenth, renewable energy integration. Combine the boiler system with renewable energy sources like solar thermal collectors to preheat water and reduce the energy demand on the boiler. 11th, waste heat utilization. Explore opportunities to use waste heat from the boiler for industrial processes, space heating or domestic hot water. 12th, regular energy audits. Conduct periodic energy audits to identify and prioritize energy saving opportunities specific to your boiler system. 13. Incentive programs. Investigate government and utility incentive programs that offer financial incentive for energy efficient boiler upgrades and retrofits. By implementing these energy conservation opportunities, you can significantly reduce energy consumption and operating cost while improving the environmental sustainability of your boiler system. This is the end of this lecture. Thank you so much.